Hey kids, it's England Teen here. Got a little article. This is from Bleeding Cool News. Sorry I forgot to crop the top of it, but yeah, it's from Bleeding Cool. It's this title right here. So they're saying that they heard rumors, and mind you, they say that they've heard rumors at the San Diego Comic Con that someone at the top is, as they say, up for the chop, meaning they're looking for somebody to axe and get rid of uh, to fire. I heard whispers of this at San Diego Comic-Con, but hearing more at London Film and Comic-Con, the gossip amongst comic book professionals, a number of whom work for Marvel Comics, that Marvel is about to lose someone senior. That Disney, with a little cajoling from Kevin Feige, are demanding a scalp over the negative publicity that surrounded the publisher earlier in the year, a mix between Nazi Captain America and diversity disaster. Someone like Ike Perlmutter is far too powerful in the organization. He's a major shareholder of Disney and is in with the president and other senior Republican figures. And with copyright laws coming up for discussion again, he's very well placed to help Disney keep control of Mickey Mouse and Winnie the Pooh. But I'm told a sacrifice is demanded. Mind you, I can't think of anyone Marvel who would be instantly snapped up by the competition, so any golden handcuffs are going to have to be very well-gilded indeed. I can think of a few I wouldn't if I was DC, especially Tom Brevert, Brevort or, and uh, Alexis Alonzo. I, I would not hire anybody who said artists didn't matter in comic books. I assume they mean to write if, of course, or of course, God, the editing, I'm bleeding cool. Of course, this is just the professionals gossiping, and it might be as much wish fulfillment or feel f fear fulfillment as with any comic book fan. I can't deny, however, that there has been a lot of it from people who should be in the know or those who know people in the know. If anything does happen, and of course there is no guarantee, I, it will I'm told to expect it by New York Comic Con in October. So, here's the thing. Who would you like to see get the axe? Now, I know a lot of people would like to bring in the hound and have him do a double beheading of Brevort and Alexis Alonzo. However, I would like to offer up a third head for the chopping. Many of you have already seen Diversity in Comics and Captain Cummings. I recommend Frugal's video on yesterday. The whole hashtag milkshake bullcrap that went on yesterday. Many of you have seen those videos while well, I was there also fighting battles. As a matter of fact, I think Diversity or it might have been Cummings showed... Uh, no, it's Doug. Doug Ernst showed a, a comment from Ron Mars that I was actually involved in. That was my particular battle where he uh, claimed that, you know... All women are more creative than men. And uh, so I was off on my own having my own particular discussions with creators. And I came across this man. Mr. Stephen Wacker at Stephen Wacker says this. Official, someone who's been reading Marvel Comics for five decades is no more of a fan than someone who's been reading for five minutes. So who is this amazing bastion of loyalty to customers? Mr. Stephen Wacker just so happens to be the VP Development Marvel Television and News Media, and this is my favorite, Undersecretary Theme Park Dance Cruise. So yes, he is not a comic book person. However, we should look at what, he, uh, at what was said after he made that bold statement. So right away, and rightfully so, somebody tries to call him out. So official at Marvel doesn't value loyalty, long-term fan worth no more than one who might not even finish reading a story? Eh, loyalty. Anyway, yes, I agree with what I wrote. The next person, I think fan, short for fanatic, means something different than works in your tweet five minutes to fanaticism, um, okay? I disagree, but appreciate the free pedantry. Sorry, gang, a Marvel exec used a big word again, so we're going to have to look it up. Pedantry, excessive concern with minor details and rules. Hmm, wait a second. The definition of a word when discussing the word is not pedantry, it's definition. So once again, you're wrong. I am really trying hard to find an insult for a guy named Wacker, but so far, snake eye.
And then a lady named Lori says, very much support this until somebody watches the movies and just started reading, tries to tell me how I should react to comic plots. To which Stephen Wacker takes very great concern and says, meh, that kind of stuff, it's easy to ignore if you really want. Amari says that's debatable. Now, I don't know if they're talking about what Lori said or if it's the whole thing, but Stephen Wacker, of course, taking concern with the fans' feelings, says, nope, fact. And here come the apologist and the people who want to save him from himself. So they start saying, oh, well, I agree with you, and then try to redefine what he actually said. I think what you're saying is we should be inclusive and welcoming to all. Hell, the people who have read for five decades are probably jaded, whereas the ones who have read for five minutes are probably full of wonder. Now, I may actually embody this, so I don't know. The other guy says, hashtag truth. Is that in terms of their value to the company, or is it a function of the hierarchy on the internet? Is there a flowchart? Does Mark Wade agree? And it continues. Now we get to the people who are a little more questioning over his tactics. Keeping it 100% loyalty does matter when you see 20 copies of Secret Empire not sold in comic shops. Yeah, that matters at Fake Nerd. Stephen Wacker goes... <laughs> Because once again, he cares about our feelings and about the feelings of customers. Except those who've been reading for five decades, we're supporting the ho- oh, please. We're supporting the hobby dwindling sales and constant cancellations suggest new fans aren't. Nothing wrong with trying to appeal to new readers, but throwing readers and characters under the bus and always attacking fans won't help. And Stephen Wacking, Stephen Wacking, okay, Stephen Wacking, uh, his reply is, eh, under the bus. I mean, I thought Beast made a very poignant point. To me, I get the feeling that the only customer, the only reader that this guy really cares about is the next one. You know, that, that's it. Well, anyway, uh, that's enough of me bitching about, well, actually, it's not. I've got another video coming. But that for this time, that's enough about me bitching. So what do you think? You know, we got uh, rumors of some heads going to roll I just gave you up somebody I think is truly not good to people. Who would you want to see out of the company? If they're going to fire somebody, who would you fire from Marvel if you had the power? Let us know in the comments below. Also, if you haven't already, click like, click share, click subscribe and that notification bell. And don't forget to visit the Patreon page to, starting tomorrow. It's Kirby Month. There is going to be a lot of patron-only videos there over the month and continuing. And it will help us keep this train rolling. And to everybody, thank you very, very much for watching.